Hey everyone, it's Jackov, and I'm here today with a video ranking all the skirmisher infantry units in Total War The Dawnless Days. Before we get started, let's break down what The Dawnless Days is, that being a mod for the game Total War Attila, mod link to the description of course, completely overhauling the game and basing it off of the world of Lord of the Rings. In previous videos, I looked at and compared the bow infantry units in the mod as well as spear infantry, ranking them in terms of how useful they are, using the statistics, availability and abilities to determine their rankings. In this video, we'll be doing the same thing but instead with skirmisher infantry. Units that generally get close to enemy lines to throw javelins before occasionally engaging in melee. At the end of the video, the charts that I use to compare their qualities will be shown. Before I get into the rankings, first I'd like you to like and subscribe if you like what you're hearing, and after that I want to make it clear that these rankings are purely my opinion, and are such a subjective, so if my rankings don't match yours, don't feel bad. That said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the units in the comments. All up, the mod as of version 0.6.0 currently has 9 skirmisher infantry units spread across its various factions, although the number of skirmisher infantry units may be subject to change in the future, as are these rankings. With all that said, let's start the rankings. Coming in last place are the Anfalus Coast levies of Gondor. A bronze tier tier 1 light skirmisher unit, it's let down by the fact that it, like many other Gondorian units, suffer from its fiefdom system, in where only limited numbers of certain units can be fielded, in this case a max of 3 per army. While this can be somewhat overlooked when it comes to elite units, a beginning unit having this limitation is crippling, meaning that Gondor can't match enemy skirmish power with this unit. Generally a very mediocre unit, but one which has brought even lower by its recruitment restrictions. Just missing out on last position are the Mirkwood Raiders of the Dol Guldur faction. A bronze tier tier 1 very light skirmisher unit, this unit at the very least has no restrictions on it, meaning it can be used en masse, something very useful given that the Dol Guldur faction almost entirely lacks ranged units, meaning these guys are crucial. However, this is an Orc Rabble unit and as such has very poor stats, which are made all the more worse by the fact that this is a fairly expensive unit, which performs at a lower level than cheaper contemporaries. Overall, an overpriced unit with poor performance, but at least it can be used in sizeable numbers. Coming in at 7th are the Snaga Javelins of the Goblins. Yet another starting unit, these bronze tier tier 1 light skirmishers are a crucial component of early goblin armies, as the faction lacks archers early on, meaning these troops must be relied on to supply you with ranged power. Generally very similar to the previous unit, these guys also have no recruitment restrictions and are cheaper than the Mirkwood Raiders, which is why they edge them out in the rankings. Just missing out on the top 5 of the Tribal Youths, a bronze tier tier 1 light skirmisher unit found at the Dunlending roster, these are a great example of a regular starting skirmisher, having all around better stats than the Orc skirmishers while not having limits placed on their numbers. Not as crucial to the Dunlendings given that the faction has starting archers, all this means that the unit can be expected to perform in its role solely instead of serving as the heart of your range strength, generally a pretty mid of the line unit when it comes to skirmishers. Just barely beating them out and making it into the top 5 of the Rivermen of Dale, a bronze tier tier 1 light skirmisher unit. The only thing separating these guys from the previous unit is that they have just slightly better all around stats for the same price, also having no limit on their recruitment. Similar to the tribal youths, these troops aren't required to fill in as Dale's archer force the way that the Snaga Javelins do, making them that much more useful. Possessing better damage and attack than the previous unit, these troops can be present to melee combat at a more competitive level, adding to their usefulness, although I should say this is the last ditch move. Making it to the top 5 and missing out on the top 3, we have the Kandish Sentries. A silver tier tier 2 medium skirmisher unit found of the Easterling faction, these troops are significantly better than the previous units, possessing far better stats allowing them to fight against mid-tier units in melee as well as active skirmishers. Unfortunately for the unit, it has a recruitment limit placed on it, meaning that only 3 can be in an army. Well, this means that it can't be a mask the way the tier 1 skirmishers can, and doesn't cripple this unit's effectiveness as it's designed to be a support unit giving assistance to both the Easterling archer line as well as melee infantry when needed. Overall, a useful unit that shows how by combining aspects of different types of units, skirmishers become that much more powerful. Coming in to snatch the bronze we have the Mahud Hunters of the Haradrim, a silver tier tier 2 light skirmisher unit, these troops also fall victim to recruitment limits, although in their case it isn't too debilitating, as they serve as a reserve to bolster the Haradrim archers and front lines, within the same role as the previous unit. However, what pushes these troops over the previous unit is the fact that while they generally share the same price and stats, they have better stats, but especially significantly more resistant to arrows, meaning that in their skirmish role they can absorb far more punishment while when serving on the front lines they can take arrow volleys and keep on fighting without sustaining large amounts of casualties. Overall, a very useful unit in the Haradrim toolbox. 
Claiming the silver and beating out the Mahud Hunters, we find the Pelagia Marines. A silver tier, tier 2 medium skirmisher unit found in the Gondor roster, these are the most expensive skirmishers in the mod, but make up for it with their combat prowess, being the hardiest skirmishers around, capable of mixing it up in melee and in its primary skirmish role. Also afflicted by the Gondorian fiefdom system, limiting their numbers to 3 units per armies, these troops regardless are a massive boon in mid-tier Gondorian armies, where they will serve as a significant portion of your melee infantry, given Gondor lacks reliable units at that level, and this unit truly is among one of the most crucial in this video when it comes to faction game plans. Finally, beating out all the competition to take the gold, we have the Erebor Axe Throwers of Erebor. A bit of a unique unit, these bronze tier tier 1 medium skirmishers blend the line between tier 1 and tier 2 units. Being far more expensive than the rest of the beginning units, but not being quite as expensive as the tier 2 units, while having stats that also lie between both ranges. While it is true that the unit possesses the shortest range out of all the skirmishers, the fact that skirmishers from the onset are always outranged by bowmen means that this isn't a great weakness on the unit's part, but instead a part of its playstyle, given that the unit essentially doubles as a bronze tier shock infantry unit, throwing axes into enemy ranks at close range before closing with them. Quite a devastating strategy in early game armies, it's made all the more viable by the fact that the unit has no recruitment limits on it, meaning that large numbers of these troops doubling as both the skirmishers and shock infantry are quite a likely sight. Overall, a highly useful unit that helps distinguish the Erebor faction and adds that little bit more depth to the mod. So there we have it. All the skirmisher infantry in the current version of the mod ranked. Remember, these rankings are purely subjective, so if you disagree, please let me know in the comments. I'd absolutely love to know what you think, as it will give me insight that I'd otherwise be lacking. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It might not seem like much, but for such a small channel, it's massively appreciated. More ranking videos will be coming up, as well as army build videos and battle scenarios too. If you like the sounds of that, stick around the channel. Before I head out, I'll give a reminder that the tables that I use to compare the units are just coming up. But with all that said, this is your host Jakov, signing out.